Hello, uh, it's great to have you with us for this special webinar presentation uh, where you can discover how you can conquer dyslexia and learning problems in your child and release their full potential and escape the homework nightmare that many of you face night after night, all in three steps. Thanks for taking the time to check this out because we really think we've come across something that can help you with your child as you move into the future. You know, uh, many people say to me, well, aren't glasses enough? People come to me as a behavioral optometrist and say, well, aren't the glasses you gave us enough to help my child suddenly bounce back? And look, frankly, they're not. Reading glasses or enhanced reading lenses such as we use can help children to concentrate for longer without feel, feeling visual stress. So in other words, they can concentrate and do a better job without suffering any ill effects from it. Is that going to solve all your problems? I'm afraid not. They do not catch kids up. So the glasses will help them concentrate more. Every now and then some of the kids will catch up on their own accord, but many of them will still continue to lag behind because there's just they're just too far behind. And many parents came to me and they, they begged me, please help my child to, to just catch up to the middle of the class. Can you do that for me, Darren? Can you just give me something to do so my kids can be quote unquote normal? Well, I've stopped aiming for that because using our exclusive vision therapy here, many of our kids have punched right through average and made it to the top of the class. I can't promise you that, but we can have a darn good shot at it. And I don't know about you, but I don't shoot, I don't shoot for the middle of anything. I always want to go for the top. If you aim for the stars and you miss, you'll hit the moon. So my aim is to help your child reach their full potential in life. Uh, I don't care if they're an A grade student, if we can help them at all to get even better than they are, that's great. But of course, for many of you, most of you indeed watching this webinar, um, your, your kids aren't A grade students. So I want to help you not only to get them concentrating more, which is what the glasses do, but I want to help you to help them start to achieve their full potential. So this webinar is for you. If you have a child who has been diagnosed with dyslexia, learning disabilities, Asperger's, uh, autistic spectrum disorder or ASD or of course the old favorite ADHD uh, you know that's just a common one you know attention deficit hyperactivity disorder look many of these labels are thrown around and um, many kids come to me with these labels already attached from other experts in the field but you know I'm not frightened of any of these frankly folks I I can take any of these on because see all of these kids with any of these problems I believe we can help so if you have a child who struggles to concentrate on their schoolwork or is easily distracted, this webinar is for you. If you have a night, the nightly homework battles with your child, which often end in screaming or tears, or if you sit down to homework with your child and you say, Johnny, sit down and do your homework. And he says, oh, I, I've just got to go to the toilet. Now get back here and do your work. What are you doing now? Oh, I've just got to sharpen my pencil, get back here and do it. What are you doing now? Oh, I've just got to do this, I've just got to do that. And you've got this huge battle on for homework, then this webinar is for you. It's also for you if you believe that your child is capable of producing better work in school. You know, sometimes the teachers say, yeah, you know, your child's doing okay, but you look at your child and you, you speak with them, you, you spend time with them, you know that they can do better than this. Maybe they've got the label lazy. Oh, you know, if they only tried, they'd do better. But if that, any of those things apply, then this webinar is for you. It's also for you if you've been suddenly surprised by a teacher reporting that your child is under, underperforming and needs remedial help. You know, sometimes you'll go through a couple of years and you'll say, oh, it's not quite right. Something's not quite right here. And then suddenly a teacher in, you know, a few grades down the track will say, hey, listen, your child has a real learning problem. We need help here. And you say, well, why didn't the last two teachers say that? Uh, if that's happened to you, then this webinar is for you. It's also for you if you've spent good money on treatments or tutoring with little or no improvement in the child's performance and results. Now, I have some big tutoring firms at the moment coming to me saying, Darren, can you help us? Because if you're going to put, you know, $80, $90 a week into tutoring for a term, that's, that's nearly $1,000 for a term, you're going to want to see some results. And if, they, if they're not getting the results, it may not be their fault. There may be something that you need to do before you get to the tutoring to give optimal results. And that's where I'm helping them out and can also help you out. So here's a little about me and what led me to work with children with learning problems. Now, my name is Darren Brown. I'm a behavioral optometrist on the Sunshine Coast. Now, if you've been to see me at ICU, 
then you'll know that I that's probably you know a better photo than I actually look in real life. I graduated from optometry school in 1984, which is a fair while ago, uh, when I was five, of course, not really. Um, but I was soon dissatisfied with mainstream optometric practice. In fact, I was bored giving reading glasses to little old ladies and little old men, you know, in some big optical chain is not my idea of a good time. So I attended my first behavioral optometry seminar in 1985, which was only a couple of months after I graduated and was already bored. But this absolutely changed my life because I, I managed to go beyond academia and talk to people who are dealing with kids in the real world. I studied and completed a postgraduate fellowship in the Australian College of Behavioral Optometry in 1989. And then in 1990, I started adapting vision therapy programs from other optometrists. But frankly, I had little or no success or impact. I mean, they had a little bit of success, but nothing like the scale that I wanted to see to help the kids I was dealing with. Then here's the big one for me. 1994, we discovered that my oldest daughter had a learning disability called Asperger's. And we, we kind of didn't even realize it for a while. She was just kind of a little bit awkward and difficult and had really, you know, poor ability to learn. And we loved her very much. And she's got a, she's a great kid with a great heart, <clears throat> but she just struggled and struggled and struggled. So I've sat where you've sat, folks. I've, I've struggled with my daughter. I found, you know, I couldn't actually help her with my therapies. All of my vision therapies that I'd studied and, and worked on seemed powerless to help her. So I started tracking right back. I knew vision held the key. So I started tracking right back to the vision therapy masters of years ago, way before we had all this automated stuff and computers and stuff, back to the 20s and 30s, when the fathers of vision therapy were, were applying their trade and making their way. And I realized that somewhere in amongst all the great, you know, gear and all the great stuff that we've got, that, that we have missed the boat in training kids to perform better. So people sometimes say to me, is there a scientific basis for vision therapy? I can't even list the amount of, of evidence there is here now. Tons of evidence in the scientific literature, uh, you know, peer review journals and all that sort of stuff which will tell us that vision, the role of vision and visual learning skills um, can help your child as they're actually learning. And it, the, the scientific literature also shows how the right type of vision therapy can dramatically, and I mean dramatically, improve learning and reading performance in many, many children. So frankly, I didn't like the traditional vision therapy exercises that I was doing. So I decided to design my own targeting school and learning improvement, not my optometry measurements. Now, this is a key point. When optometrists, when behavioral optometrists get together, they share all their, you know, papers and findings and, and, they, and we share a bunch of numbers. This child went from this number to this number. But frankly, as a parent, you don't care about that. You want to know, can your child improve at school? So that's what I've targeted. The question is not whether, whether vision therapy works, because it clearly does. The question is what type of vision therapy works? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Now, I've designed my own and it really is working for me and for many, many of our patients. So I set out on a quest. I wanted to find help for parents of children with dyslexia and learning problems. Now, you need to also understand, folks, I get asked this question a lot. Do you test for dyslexia? Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> dyslexia is so unstable in its definition. It used to be... Um, considered a minimal brain dysfunction or an actual, actual brain disorder. But that's not the case anymore. Now it is, it's, it's a label that's attached to almost every child with a learning problem. So do I test for it? Yes and no. Does anybody test for it? Yes and no. You know, there's no specific dyslexia test. Don't believe the stuff oh, I've tested for dyslexia and your child's dyslexic. No, they haven't. There's not a stable test for it. There's not even a stable de definition for it. But I want to also find help for parents who feel powerless to help their children. You can go and get all the Whiskar test and all the, <clears throat> the academic tests done on your child. But here's the thing. They don't give you anything to do. They don't give you a set program that you can work through to try and help your child. So I wanted to change that. I wanted to help parents who feel powerless to help their children. I also want to find help for parents who are just sick of watching their child struggle to learn, watching them, you know, spend hours to do what takes the other kids minutes, watching them delay things and watching them cry 
uh, watching them struggle, you know, you can see it in their eyes. You can see it as they hold the pencil, how difficult it is for them. I wanted to find help for parents who are just sick of watching their child fail again and again till they're so discouraged they won't even try stuff anymore. I wanted to find help for parents who are tired of seeing their child's self-esteem shattered by schoolwork. You know, kids who say, Mum, I'm dumb. You know, the other kids are smart and I'm dumb. I also want to find help for parents who are, who are finished with fighting over homework every night. If homework is a battle, you've got to find a better way than what you're currently doing it, truly. It's just not worth the emotional drama. Also, for parents who genuinely believe that their child is smarter than their school results and they want to do something about it. You know, I would encourage your parents, no matter where your child is at, believe in your kids. Believe that they're smarter than their school results because we can help you attain. You know, I'm not going to promise to make them Einsteins, but I can help you to make them better than they currently are. So here's something to think about. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of fact stuff coming your way from visionandlearning.org and the American Optometric Association. 80% of children who are reading disabled, including dyslexics, have vision problems which can be solved. Now, don't believe, oh, dyslexic, there's nothing we can do. There is something we can do because almost all of them have vision problems. 25% of all children have a vision problem significant enough to affect their school performance. 95% of first grade non-readers have significant visual problems. So if you have a child who's struggling to read, there's a very, very high percentage chance that vision is playing a role. In fact, they have nearly two and a half times more visual problems than high achievers. Here's some more. In one California-funded study, repeat offenders reduced from 45% to 16% when they received on-site optometric vision therapy. Vision therapy caused a decrease in, in crime. And a oh, fair whack of that, folks, is because it causes a decrease in frustration because it gives kids the ability they need to perform. School vision screenings detect only 20 to 30% of significant vision problems, and that's generous. But one in 10 children is at risk for having an undiagnosed vision problem. One in 10. It's just stunning. So here's a testimony from someone who has been through our program. Uh, they started the program. They've seen huge improvements. In fact, this particular person um, said to us, that in a three month period or just under three month period, their son had improved 16 levels in reading. So that's a great result and we love hearing those things and we get a lot of them, it's awesome. In this webinar, I wanna show you the little known visual skills that can have an enormous impact on learning. I wanna show you the symptoms to look for to discover if your child has vision problems. So I wanna help you figure this out yourself. I also want to share with you some simple tests you can do yourself at home to see the effects of vision problems on your child's learning and how you can spend just 20 minutes a day, school days, doing the right vision therapy with your child to see improvement in their performance within three months. How you can also do this in your own home without therapists, optometrists, reading tutors, psychologists, teachers, anything like that. You can do this yourself. It's easy. And how we can structure our vision therapy, how we can keep you on track, how we can remind you, because any sort of therapy, it's hard to keep going. And I'm also going to give you some free ideas for therapies that you can do with your child right now. So let's get into it. What are the visual skills and how do they affect dyslexia and learning problems? Well, skills, any sort of skills, are important. Skills involving uh, both vision and the understanding of visual information, that's what visual skills are. And when we learn to master them, we can become really good at learning. And we only learn to master them as we practice and develop. So it's not just about seeing. Visual skills are not just about seeing. You know, a monkey can get 6-6 six, six or 20-20 vision. Doesn't mean they can learn. It's about seeing and understanding, interpreting and using that visual information which makes visual skills so important. We all use them, every single one of us. And uh, they often develop naturally as we are learning to read, write and spell. So if you've um, <coughs> developed very naturally through uh, prep and grade one, two, three, etc., then you will develop the right visual skills as you go along as a natural uh, part of learning to read, write and spell. However, 
most teachers skip the teaching of these skills and they go, go straight to teaching how to read. That's fine if, you're, if, if you've got the skills developing well and if you're a bright child and if, if things are set up well, you know, that's great. You'll love it. But there's a huge number of kids that just don't cope with it. They haven't got the skills in the first place. They don't develop the right ones and they find themselves being left behind. Visual skills are the tools with which a child learns and you can teach these skills. That's the exciting thing. So let me ask you a question. How could you build a table without the right tools? If I came to you and said, I want you to build this table, here's the wood, off you go. And you'd say to me, well, where's the hammer? Where's the saw? Where's the screws and the screwdriver? And, oh no, you don't get those. You just got to build me a table. How good do you think your table would be? Not very good. You need the right tools to do the job. In any profession, you need the right tools to do the job. How can you learn to read without the right tools to do the job? It's much, much harder. You know, you, you develop them maybe over time, maybe haphazardly, maybe a bit here and a bit there. But if we can give you the right tools to do the job, how much better will you be able to read? A lot, I can tell you. In life, we train skills in all sorts of things. Now, this concept of developing skills is not unusual. If you take, for example, playing football, let's say soccer. If you wanted your child to learn soccer, you wouldn't just say, here's your jersey, hop on the field with the A-grade team. Now, if they went straight into playing games with the A-grade team, yeah, you know, they, they, they might get a few skills along the way. But how much more effective would it be if you sent them to soccer practice where they learned how to pass, how to kick, how to shoot, how to head, how to tackle? They learn those things. Are they playing the game? No. But they learn those skills because they're practicing them and they're drilling them. That way, when they get to the football field, they can produce the goods in the game because they've already got the skills. Even Lionel Messi goes to football practice, folks. So there's nothing new about this concept of training skills. What about learning the guitar or the piano? You know, you could say, hey, here's a guitar, hop on stage and play. Here's a piano, hop on stage and play. It'd be embarrassing. But you would send them to guitar lessons or piano lessons. And you would say, learn the skills. Once you have the skills, once you have developed these skills, you can then play properly and we can put you on stage and it would be awesome. The problem with reading is we just throw you on the field. We just throw you on the stage and we say, read, read, read. Learn words, spell, write but we don't give you the actual tools that you'll need to do the job. It is far more powerful to separate you from the actual task and train these skills separately from learning to read. And it supercharges your reading, writing and spelling. If you can teach a child the skills, you will supercharge their experience. So if, if you wanted to play good football, if we trained you and drilled you on the skills, it is better than just making you play 100 games back to back. Folks, what I'm talking about here, there is no magic bullet, glasses, pill. You know, there's no way to magically teach kids these skills. But hey, don't give up. There is a way. It's just not a magic way. But it takes time and commitment. And one thing's for sure. The answer is not doing more of what they hate, hoping that one day magically they will improve. And that's what remedial reading is. Uh, if you remember Einstein's uh, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, that's what remedial reading is. But we don't want to do that. We, we don't want to just keep going through the motions expecting a different result. What we want to do is conquer visual dyslexia and learning problems. So let's have a look at the three steps that we look at. We don't want our kids looking like this little fella here, so frustrated and angry about it. Step number one, get an eye test. And if you've been to ICU, or anywhere else, uh, get a, an eye test. Uh, that's an important start. If you've got a huge uh, vision problem there, you've got to deal with that first. Number two is do some home, home visual skills testing yourself, and we'll show you those. We're going to go into these in more detail in a moment. And step number three is do something positive and proactive about it. Find the right therapy program. And if you're listening to this, I'm willing to bet that, that you want to try something to help your child. You're not just mucking around trying to find a quick easy fix you genuinely want to help your child you've come to the right place so let's work through these three areas very quickly one on one step number one is to get an eye test now ask your teacher about your child's learning i do that first you know how's my little little boy little girl going in school are they concentrating are they learning that will give you an insight 
The next thing to do is to come and see us and get a professional and a competent eye test. Just getting a regular eye test is not enough. If you go to a normal optometrist in your local shopping centre, they will test the sight of the eye, they will test eye health, they will test whether they are long-sighted, short-sighted, or if they have astigmatism. That is what they will test. Um, and many of them rush it through, they'll spend five or ten minutes with a child. Yes, there's no disease, they're not you know, hugely long or short-sighted, and they'll often get, you'll often walk away with the diagnosis, in inverted commas, that my child has 20-20 or 6-6 vision. Their vision is good. But I would urge you not to stop here. As a behavioural optometrist, we go a lot further than just whether they can see and whether they're long-sighted, short-sighted, astigmatic and have good eye health. It's not the full story. Let me tell you what I do. I go on to look at focus. At eye teaming, we look at it at distance and near. We see how the eyes work together. We see how much reserves they have or how, much, uh, how long they're able to sustain their focus, how they're able to change their focus, how they're able to team their eyes together. We also look at perceptual tests. We look at eye movements. We look at visualization, eye hand, uh, directionality. We look at a whole bunch of things. Let me ask you again, how many of you have had an eye test for your child and been told there's nothing wrong? But you walked out of that place thinking, you know what, I know there's something wrong, but they didn't find it. If that's you, you need to go on to this next level, the home visual skills test. Now, we're going to look at a number of different tests here. I'm going to show you a, a symptom list, and this is the most powerful tool you have. But I'm also going to show you a simple focus test, convergence test, an eye movement test, and a memory test. These are not comprehensive. They are just little insights that you can go to, you know, if you're not living uh, local to us, that you can go and see your local behavioral optometrist and say, hey, can you test for these with my child? Let's have a look at symptoms. This is the key one right here. This is the one that is going to uh, really alert you to if your child has problems. Let's run through these symptoms right now. Does your child exhibit the following signs? If they do, then chances are you have uh, a problem that we can help. Do they show red, sore or itching eyes, particularly after doing a lot of reading or late in the day after school? Do they show jerky eye movements or have one eye that turns in or out? That's a huge red flag and we can deal with that. Do they squint a lot? Do they rub their eyes or do they have excessive blinking? Do they ever complain of blurred or double vision? Uh, you know, either on the book up close or on the whiteboard when they look up at school. Do they ever complain of headaches, dizziness, or nausea? Now, all of these things are huge red flags for eye strain. Do they tilt their head, close or block out one eye when they're reading? Maybe they lie down on the book so that you can only physically use one eye. That's a kind of a, a sneaky way of closing an eye. That's a good one to look out for. Here's the big one. Do they show poor concentration for near work like reading? Here's the thing. All of those, those symptoms I've listed there involve eye strain and if your child's experiencing eye, eye strain there's two ways they can go they can either do it and suffer for it sore eyes headaches tired eyes blurred vision etc late in the day because they're fatiguing late in the day or the other way they can go is to not concentrate and if they don't concentrate they don't get sore eyes headaches tired eyes late in the day what they get is poor performance and you go out of your brain trying to get them to do their homework that's the number one symptom we see Here's some more. Does your child show the following performance cues? Do they avoid near work? Once again, our number one symptom, poor concentration span. Johnny, sit down and do your homework. What are you doing now? I'm getting a drink. What are you doing now? I'm going to the toilet. What are you doing now? I have to sharpen my pencil. Get back here and do your work. You know, we, we go crazy trying to get them to do it. But that is a very big red flag for needing vision help. Do they show the following? Do they show um, a frequent loss of place when reading? So when they're reading, they'll lose their place. Maybe have to run their finger under the line to try and keep their place. Maybe they omit or insert or reread words or letters. In fact, rereading is a big one. Lots of kids, in an effort to not make a mistake, they'll slow right down to try and make sure that they're in the right spot. That's a, a huge red flag right there. Do they confuse similar looking words? Do they fail to recognize the same word in the next sentence? So, so they, they found a word they didn't know. You say, that's such and such a word. Okay, yep, good. Turn over the page. They miss exactly the same word you just gave them about 20 seconds before. Very frustrating, but that's a red flag for us. 
Here's some more. Do they show any of the following? Are they smart in everything but school? I love working with smart kids. And most of the kids we have are actually quite smart, even if they have a learning problem, because the problem's not in their brain, folks. The problem is in the mechanics of reading. If you have a child, here's a key. If you have a child who's smart at maths, but really poor at reading, you've got a reading problem. You don't have a child with an intellectual problem. Here's another thing. Are they better verbally than when reading or writing? If your child is, if you talk to your child and they, they have sensible discussions and they know lots of stuff about their chosen area, but you ask them to get, you know, reading it or writing it, it's a disaster, then we definitely have a problem that we can deal with. Do they suffer from poor, uh, poor self-esteem or self-image and a sensitivity to failure? Look, if your child is trying stuff, trying to read, trying to do things the best they can and they fail every time, they're just going to reach a point where they give up and they won't even try. And if your child is at that point, you need to be very, very careful because they are ready to give up, ready to turn away, ready to you know, try anything except doing that stuff, the reading stuff we can help because as part of our therapy, we can build into their self-esteem as well as their skills. Do, the, do you experience temper flare-ups, aggressiveness, frequent frustration when doing homework? I mean, kids just get frustrated with this stuff. They're over it. They try, it doesn't work, they get angry. Do you experience frequent crying, especially during homework? That's more of the same. Or a short attention span, and there it is again, poor concentration irritability or daydreaming. You know, some kids are nice kids. They're beautiful kids. They don't want to upset you. They, they don't want to cause a ruckus. So they just float away in daydream. If you, you know, if you're getting them to work and they're constantly just having these big blank spots where they're thinking about, <clears throat> you know, other things, then we need to see them. And here's some more symptoms to think about. Is your child frequently labeled lazy? Or have you been told they don't try? Maybe they've been called dyslexic or learning disabled or, you know, learning difficulties, something like that. Perhaps they've got attention deficit disorder or they've been called a slow learner. Maybe they have a behavioral problem where they're just, they're acting out all the time because they're so frustrated. Maybe they've even been termed a juvenile delinquent. Uh, perhaps your teacher has said, look, they're working below potential. These are all red flags for us. So. There's your symptom list. Let's have a look at some of the tests you can actually do at home. Here's a focus test. You simply hold a book with small print about five to seven centimeters from their nose. <clears throat> Take the printed chart that uh, we can supply to you, tack it to the wall, and you get them to change from clearing the book to clearing the chart saying yes each time it's cleared. So essentially what you want to do is get them to do this 20 times and record how long it takes them. If it takes longer than 40 seconds, or if you hear them slowing down as they go through it, then chances are you have a focusing problem. What about an eye teaming test? This one's easy. Hold a pencil uh, 50 centimeters from their nose and move it closer and watch to see if one eye drifts away. They need to get closer than five to seven centimeters from the nose. If not, you may have an eye teaming problem. What about an eye movement test? This is similar, but you just want to look at how their eyes are moving and you can move the pencil left, right, up and down, get them to follow the pencil. And if their eyes are jerking or they lose the target or they have to move their head to keep up, you could have an eye movement problem. And then finally, a visual memory test. Write two series of numbers, one through nine, on separate pieces of paper, all the same size. Hold the book to block the child's view and place two numbers randomly side by side, uh, not side by side, but randomly behind the book. Remove the book for a second, then replace it and ask the child what the numbers were. And then you add more numbers and see how many they can remember. Uh, they need to sort of do it correctly two out of three attempts. Now, this is heavily dependent on age, but this will give you an idea if they are struggling with their visual memory. So it's a really good test to just give you an idea if they're struggling with that. Now, the third step is the most important. You need to do something about it because it's not good enough to test for something if we fail to treat it. This happens all the time in learning problems. People test things, they give things a label, and then they don't give any way of overcoming it. It's just not good enough, I don't believe. Testing and diagnosing is completely pointless if you don't do something about it. You just get a nice label, your child gets tagged with that for the rest of their life 
and unfortunately from there uh, you you just you know they're just stuck with it doing something is always better than doing nothing if you do nothing nothing will change I would always accept the do something advice over the nothing can be done diagnosis and I put this little bit in here because frankly some of the the, the people that I see they go around from practitioner to practitioner trying to find a label they like they don't want a solution they want a label and when I say hey you know do you want a label or a solution they say oh I want a solution but then it's all too hard for them they don't want to put the time and effort or expense in to help their child they just want someone to say your child is dyslexic and then they can put that label on them and think well my child's dyslexic my child's dyslexic look I would urge you not to be that parent and trust me they're out there I would urge you to be the parent who says you know what I want a solution I'm gonna try everything I possibly can to help my child they're the, the mums and dads I want to work with and I hope that that's you as you listen to this presentation but by the same token, taking the wrong advice will see you wasting time and money on therapies that look magic but simply do not work. And let's be clear, not all advice and therapies work. There's a whole bunch of really crazy stuff out there that is designed to help your child. And they'll make these claims that, look, I wouldn't be in business still if our stuff didn't work. I wouldn't have all of the schools on the coast referring kids to me if it didn't work. It's all about results and we want to see results for you and your child. So what is the ideal therapy? I'll tell you what it is and uh, you'll probably agree with me. It's got to be easy to join, easy to do and have simple instructions. You don't want complex stuff. You don't want stuff that drives you crazy. Uh, it's got to be simple. It's got to be done in your own home. No travel. You know, every time you travel into a, a specialist or a you know, uh, some sort of uh, practitioner, an educationalist or whatever, you've got to take time out of your day. You've got to hop in the car. You've got to drive in. You've got kids. You've got other kids whinging. And is this over yet? Then you've probably got to call into McDonald's or something on the way home to keep them all happy. It's a nightmare. If it's done in your own home, you can do it at your own pace. It's awesome. The ideal therapy takes 20 minutes a day. No longer. You know, and I know this sounds crazy, but if, if you do 20 good minutes, it's going to be worth more than doing an hour a day in some guy's office. It also lasts no longer than nine months for guaranteed results. So that's the top end of our therapy, nine months. We don't want the thing to last for seven years. I've seen it. I've seen people doing different sorts of therapy for seven years. And I said to them, my goodness, you need a medal because I would never have kept it up for seven years. The ideal therapy is also fun. You know, getting kids to do stuff is really difficult. If you make it into fun and games and stuff like that, it's going to be an awful lot easier. And finally, vision therapy is like any other therapy. A little every day is far more powerful than an hour or two a week. But you need to see it through. You can't just start it a couple of weeks later, drop out and say, well, that didn't work. If you see it through, you will suddenly get the results that you long for at some point in the future. But again, I caution you, not all therapies are the same. Training visual skills is incredibly powerful. And I'll tell you why it is. Because if you train the core visual skills, you literally cannot fail to see improvement in your child. Because you're training what we all use when we read and when we learn. I've done this with dyslexics, Asperger's, ADHD, autistic kids, adult illiterates, even refugees. Why? Because we all use the same skills. Doesn't matter. You know, we can have, um, uh, you know, really severe physical problems. But if you're going to read, you've got to learn the same skills as the next person. It works in Chinese. It works in other languages. Um, it works in languages like Hebrew that run from right to left. We all use skills, folks. I'm not talking about teaching kids a language. I'm talking about training the skills that we all need and we all use regardless of whether they're diagnosed as dyslexics or Asperger's or ADHD or anything else. If you can give an Asperger's or a dyslexic kid the skills they need, you will improve their performance regardless of whatever diagnosis they have. I actually trialed these techniques and developed them in our special program which I did with uh, refugees up in Malaysia. These were bright kids who never had a chance to learn and they stalled on the starting blocks because they might be nine or, or ten. They sit them at a desk for the first time in their life. They give them a pencil and they say, start learning. And the kid goes, well, no, nope, nothing, nothing there. So we tracked them back, gave them the skills they need. They got confidence. 
they got good at these skills and they started to learn like crazy. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? We all use the same visual skills, no matter who you are. And that's why this program works. That's why I can say we get improvement in 100% of our kids because if you do the techniques, you know, if you send your kid to soccer practice, they've got to be a better soccer player. They're not going to be worse. They've got to be better. And so it is with vision therapy. Now, my therapy works on this principle. If you give your child a fish, you feed them for a day. If you teach them to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. What is that saying? It's saying if you give a child the skills they need to learn, they will actually learn. And that's what a good vision therapy program does. It gives them the skills they need to learn and it will serve them for a lifetime. You haven't got to top this stuff up. Once you learn it, it's learnt. Now, my vision therapy program works on this principle. But if you do some, something often enough, you train the skill until it becomes automatic. Then you become a highly trained individual. Parents, do you remember when you first tried to learn to drive a car? You thought, my goodness, how does anyone do this? You know, first time you sat behind the wheel, they put their foot on the clutch. They let the clutch out, but got the indicator on, got to check your mirrors, got to, you know, hit the accelerator. It's, it's just like, wow, how can anybody do this? But when you do it often enough, you train those skills and they become automatic. Pretty soon you're doing all that while you're talking to your friend, while you're listening to the radio, some of you while you're, while you're using your cell phone and that's bad, so don't do it. But you know what I mean? It becomes automatic the more you do it. And that's the whole idea with skills training. You train them over and over again like a pilot until it becomes automatic and then it is in. That's all we need to do with our kids. So here's another test for me. I'm delighted with the improvements in my little boy in just a few months. And, you know, sometimes we can't quantify these improvements, but he's, he's trying, he's, he's making steps ahead, and that's what we're asking for. Here's another one. 12 reading levels in six weeks because we gave him the skills we, that he needed to do the job. So let's recap on how you can conquer visual dyslexia and learning problems. Get a professional eye test. If you come to ICU, we'll take care of you. If not, go to a behavioral optometrist as opposed to one in the local shopping center. You can do some home vision skills tests yourself. Check the symptoms yourself. If you're ticking a lot of symptoms, you need to get this dealt with. And number three, please do something positive about it. And here's what I believe is the best thing you can do for your child and their future learning. My program that I've designed is called Learning at Light Speed Home Vision Therapy Program. It's our exclusive program which trains the actual visual skills your child needs to learn. It doesn't train reading, it trains, trains everything they need to read. When these become automatic, reading becomes really easy. It works through a developmental progression. So it starts very easy, very basic, and it progresses right through to advanced skills. It involves games and therapies that are fun highly targeted and take only 20 minutes a day school days only so compliance is high with this the kids have a blast oftentimes the parents have a blast you know doing it with their kids they're having a great time with their kids but they're also learning and it can catch up a child and in many cases it can give them an unfair advantage over their peers i put this in because you know i don't just catch kids up we accelerate them to maximum potential and if you think your child's got a lot of potential and you do this therapy program, you can often accelerate them right to the top of the class. It's been designed by a passionate professional, that is me, who has experienced the anguish you are feeling right now. As I said before, I've sat where you've sat. I've felt the frustration and anger and, and, and the desperation of trying to help my daughter to achieve and become all she can be. Incidentally, she is now a fully qualified teacher in Malaysia and she teaches refugee kids with learning problems. How good is that? Um, it's been designed to target the visual skills your child needs to succeed, not just my optometry measurements. I can come up with all the measurement changes in the world. You don't care. You want to you want to know, is your child improving at school? So that's what we're targeted. It's been designed with simplicity and fun in mind because that's how you get kids to do activities. And above all, it works. We have proven results. We have, we have reams of these, of, of these results of kids improving out of sight if you do as I ask. So what's the game plan? We need to do the right techniques in the right order and leave no stone unturned. Why do we take a kid who's in grade four or five and track them right back to prep and rebuild their visual skills from prep? The reason is we don't know which skills they've got. 
We don't know if they've got them all, some of them. If they've got them in a kind of a weird, twisted, distorted way, we don't know. So we take them right back. We take an extra month or so to train the very basic skills. And then we build upon those. So right back to prep. And we make sure that we miss none of them. And we build them in the right order, layer upon layer, doing the right techniques in the right order. It's no good doing a bunch of random techniques, you know, some advanced, some not advanced, and jumping all over the place. Track back, build the foundation, then build the house. That's what we do in our vision therapy. Once they gain the skill and the confidence that they need, they can move on to the next skill. And they get more and more confidence as they go along. So what are we talking about here? Here are the seven key visual skills that your child needs to learn effectively. Focus, eye teaming, eye movements, visualization, laterality, I'll tell you what that is in a moment, eye-hand coordination, and then other areas that we look at, coding, sequencing, gross and fine motor, a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's look at all of these individually. Focusing. When we train focus, we increase their concentration for reading. We help them copying off the board. It helps to relieve tired, sore eyes and headaches, and it improves comprehension and retention. Eye teaming ability, it increases concentration, it improves reading flow, and it decreases double vision and general eye stress when they are reading. So they, now glasses can help these, but we also train them. Eye movements, this is a key one because it improves reading flow. It decreases misread or skipping lines or losing their place, all that sort of stuff. It can also help them copying off the board. If they have poor eye movements, so they look up, they read something, they look down, and they forget what they've what they've got, what what they've seen up in you know when they looked in the distance, and because they lose their place when they look down, and then when they look up, they lose their place. We can help them with that. Training eye movements, and some parents ask me this. It can also help them with ball sports, especially small ball sports like tennis, cricket, baseball, and that sort of thing. Here's my favourite area: visualisation. I love this area because what we do here is we improve spelling. We can improve memory. We can improve creativity and don't believe all oh, this child just can't remember stuff. They've got a, a, a you know, a memory disorder, a short term memory disorder. Really, you can train it unless unless you show me an MRI with a big hole in their brain where the memory bit is. I believe we can train them, give them the skills, give them the tools and they can start remembering and then they can become more creative because they'll be able to visualize really well. Laterality is left-right awareness, and it's key in reversing numbers or letters. So if we can train their visual space world so that everything is the right way around, they'll stop reversing and writing things backwards. That includes mirror writing, by the way. And also eye-hand, which improves writing in ball sports and all that sort of stuff. And then the other areas we talked about, coding, sequencing, a whole bunch of other areas that we just train as we go along. So when you join Learning at Lightspeed, here's what you get. I'm going to give you a sample of some of the sorts of programs and show you what it actually looks like. But you get, number one, very clear instructions. I don't want anything left to chance. We clearly lay out what ex each, each exercise is trying to achieve and exactly how you do it. You also get all the charts and the handouts. You get everything you need so you can run off copies as often as you want. You can even open this up if you save it onto your iPad, you can open it up on your iPad. You also get records, record sheets so you can plot your progress. You can put little ticks in to say, yes, we did it this way and see if you're missing days out. You also get email support. We're here when you need us. Many, many patients email me. I email them back and uh, you know we discuss things through email. You can always call the office and we'll talk to you. We're here to help. You, you also... Um, Sorry, each game and technique is designed to build on the previous one. So you, we don't want you to rush ahead. We want you to take a little bit of time and get this right. It's not the time to rush. It's time to get it right. So you're probably saying, well, what does this stuff look like? Here's a few examples. This is a cool exercise we've got called Capture the Mosquitoes, where what they've got to do, and the instructions bear this out, is they've got to circle each mosquito four, uh, sorry, three times, then move on to the other mosquito without stopping and you time them to see how fast they can get. So what we've done here is we've numbered the mosquitoes. This is a more advanced version of the uh, capture of the mosquito. So they've got a circle one, then they move on, they circle two, circle three. So they're learning scanning eye movements. They're, they're controlling their eye movements, looking ahead. They're coordinate, coordinating their hand and their eye 
training a lot of different stuff in this simple but fun uh, exercise. This is an example of the <clears throat> of the sort of uh, the sort of um, presentation that you get. So you you get instructions like this. Here's the purpose. Here's what you will what you will need, and we provide the letter chart. Here's the method, number one, number two, number three. And here's some variations. Once they've kind of got it and they're doing well, we stretch them a little bit. We, you know, we try and do it a little bit, you know, stretch them and, and make them uh, uncomfortable for a little bit and then make them achieve that higher goal. And that's how we move ahead with it. We also give you all the charts. This is not the actual chart. This is just a representation of it. But we, we supply all, all of those sorts of things. <clears throat> here's another uh, visual memory activity. Uh, it's got objectives, the activities, and it runs through the different sorts of activities that you can do. Um, but what I want to do right now, we're going to take a few moments out from our presentation. I'm going to ask you, parents, would you mind if I experimented on you? Is that okay? So many of you are just watching this with a cup of coffee at night or something like that. Take a few moments. Let me experiment on you. Here's the experiment. One of my favorite areas is spelling. And in spelling, we use a key skill called visual memory and visualization. This skill has all but vanished amongst many of our kids. Can you think why the skill of visualization has vanished amongst, vanished amongst our kids? Can you, can you think why? I'll tell you why. Because of screens. I love screens. I love movies. I love games. They're all cool. But many kids these days have never visualized in the old days we you know people would listen to radio plays or have books read to them and they you know so he he opened the door and and in your mind's eye you'd picture that but these days they've watched dvds they've they've played on ipads it's all been visual visualed for them they don't have to visualize at all and so the key thing here is we want to teach kids this amazing skill to help them to visualize correctly so <coughs> screens are the problem so here's the experiment mums and dads i want you to spell the word hippopotamus just do it right now quickly come on you know you can do it okay for those of you who are interested that's how you spell it not really important i don't really care how you spell it did you look away and try and visualize that word most of you would have done that you would have tried to visualize the word in an effort to spell it. Now, if that's the skill you just used to learn spelling, what happens to your child when he can't do that skill? If your child can't do that, how are they going to learn spelling? What if they can't use that? I'll tell you how they're going to learn it. They're going to learn it by rote. They're going to repeat sounds over and over again, very inefficient, and that's why they struggle with spelling. So here's another testimony. A young girl named Laura in grade three, terrible speller, learned about a word a week we put her through the vision therapy once she could visualize well she learned 155 words in her first month so suddenly she has a vocabulary this little girl who had next to no words in her vocabulary suddenly got one and that's an incredible experience for her but you can't just wave a magic wand and give her the skill you've got to train it properly so if you are struggling right now with a child who has dyslexia learning difficulties, Asperger's, ADHD, or is just plain underperforming, this could be the best news you have ever heard. Now, here's the thing. You've, you've heard a lot and learned a lot in this webinar, but if you haven't committed to anything, you can rest assured you have zero, and I mean zero chance of changing your child's life. I'll be frank about it. You've got to do something about it. If you've never done therapy before, you might be a little bit overwhelmed with this. Well, don't worry. Our therapy is simple, it's easy to follow as I've shown you, it's games that your child would love to do and we target all the areas that really matter to help them learn effectively. So what does it cost? Well, if we were going to put a cost on it, I could easily charge $297 per module. So we'd be looking at $297 for each of these modules, which would come to $2,079. Now I could charge that, but I'm not going to. We could also charge for our full email support and the simple instructions, video demonstrations, that sort of stuff. We could charge you um, $500 to help you transform your home into a vision therapy center with you as the trained therapist. We could probably charge you more if we're going to train you to be a therapist. 
So here's what you get. The modules, $2,079 and full video and email access. Total value, $2,579. But hey, before I reveal to you my special price, I don't want to even leave it there. Let's have some fun. I want to add in some incredible bonuses, some parenting books, which are awesome, that can have a huge impact on your life, your family, and your children. So let's have some fun before we go on. <clears throat> Here's our first bonus, the Involvement Informer. It teaches you how to become actively involved in your child's schooling. It's valued at $27. Uh, it's an ebook, and I will give that to you free of charge. Here's another ebook, How to Raise Great Kids. It's 75 question and answers on how to raise great kids. A um, whole bunch of different questions here. You know, if we just track through those, have a look at it. Developing your child's self-esteem, picky eater, ouch. Um, whole bunch of stuff there it is valued at $47 and I will give it to you free of charge if you join learning at Lightspeed here's another one learn the answers to questions like these there's a whole stack of different ways that you can input into your child here it's valued at $37 we're gonna give this to you free as well in the name of fun how about the smart parenting guide Believe it or not, this is fantastic stuff. The way to talk to kids, how to form values and develop character in your child. It's awesome stuff. Valued at $37, I'm going to give that to you free. So let's just run through what you get. You get the seven modules for $2,079. You get full email access and support. Plus you get those four incredible modules. Total value $2,727. But you won't pay that much today. You will not page that much because I'm taking care of you, I promise. So before I tell you our special price, let me ask you an important question. Can you do all this another way? I mean, can you get other vision therapy or other sorts of therapy? And if so, how much does it cost? By the way, this is not my program because I've designed this one for my patients. So what does vision therapy normally cost? I've saw some, it costs about $139 a session and most optometrists recommend twice weekly sessions for at least eight weeks, with often a second block, uh, block of sessions a month later. So it is a minimum of $2,224. Plus, here's the thing, you need to travel to them from their office. That's time, fuel, snacks along the way, which for 16 sessions, twice a week for eight weeks, is another $480 you wouldn't have factored in there. That's if you can find a behavioral optometrist in your area. So the total for the 16 sessions is $2,704. And if they need a second block, you're talking $5,408. Now, this is not uh, unusual, folks. For in-office therapy, it's not unusual. For eight weeks, that is $2,704. For 16 weeks, it is $5,408. Ouch. Now, I'm guessing a lot of you out there don't want to pay that sort of money. And you don't want to take your child twice a week to somebody's therapy rooms. That is if you can even find one in your area. Uh, and most of these therapies, remember, are designed to change optometry measurements, which is nice, but it doesn't necessarily improve performance. Now, that's a lot of money to pay to not necessarily see your child improve. So let me explain this again. My exercises and therapies have not been designed to change measurements in my office, but to see tangible and observable improvements in your child's learning and reading. What about other sorts of doctors, medical professionals, educationalists? Can't they help overcome dyslexia? Great question. Well, as I said before, dyslexia is, and, and learning problems is a huge and highly controversial area. If you go to 10 professionals, you get 10 opinions, honestly. <clears throat> and there is everything from pills to colored glasses to therapy to a whole bunch of stuff that is claimed to help. So which ones work and how much do they cost? I would say at the outset, beware of miracle cures because they don't exist. If you have someone comes to you say, if you put our magic colored glasses on or magic drugs or magic eye movements or hypnosis or kinesthetic or anything like that, and, and suddenly their, their, their learning will go through the roof. It pretty much doesn't exist. Beware of those miracle cures because apart from maybe a small placebo effect, it will often not result. Occasionally it will, but often it will not result in a tangible improvement long term. So here's a few alternatives that you may have already heard about or even tried. 
um, that I've sourced in my area. I won't even mention some of the more controversial and outrageous treatments. I'm just going to look at methods that are pretty well established as far as learning disabilities and remedial reading fraternities are concerned. You could have your child assessed by a paediatrician. Now they are medical specialists. The most frequent uh, mode of treatment they recommend is medicating your child with drugs like Ritalin or Dexamphetamine. The cost of consultations and medications usually costs over $1,000 a year. And you have all the side effects, mood changes and swings. It, I won't even go into that. You need to talk to them about that. I'm not an expert in that field. But it'll cost you over 1000 a year. Or you could have your child assessed by a clinical psychologist. We've got some great uh, clinical psychs in our area. Many of them refer directly to me. In fact, most of them do, I think. They will identify areas where your child is behind the age norms. Schools use this information. They might even offer a few suggestions as to how you can help them but they don't have a program to back this up. It will cost you $550, you get a nice report, but you don't get a step-by-step -step program of things you can actually do. Or, here's another one, you can hire a tutor. Where um, Your tutor though, now this is absolute truth, bear this in mind, your tutor can only do what you can do, or your teacher can do. Perhaps with a little more skill and knowledge, but you're still all fighting the basic problem that you don't have the visual skills to do the job. And that can cost you $90 a week, which is $4,680 a year, and they battle the same things you do. The lack of visual skills in your child. In fact, there is no comparison. Doing something is better than doing nothing, and doing the right thing is best of all. Vision therapy is not a magic quick fix. It takes time. It takes effort. And there is actually nothing else around that can train the actual skills your child is going to need when they learn. So my question to you as I wrap it up is what do you want? As a parent, you're sitting here listening to this, what do you actually want? Do you want an easy way out? Do you want someone to say, Hell, here's a magic pill, let's do it. As I said, magic pill glasses or a quick fix is not out there. It's going to take some, some you know, hard work and commitment. Do you want someone to do it all for you? I've had parents who've looked at our program and said, you know, it's no good. I can't afford to spend the time. I can't invest the time with my child. If you want someone to do it all for you, we'll gladly come to your house and do it for you in your own home for $400 an hour. Absolutely. But it's not going to happen. That's why, you know, I mean, that's what you would pay to get professionals in to do it. Do you want a diagnosis rather than a solution? You know, many, many parents go from, from practitioner to practitioner till they get the diagnosis they want. But I don't want to give you a diagnosis. I want to give you a solution. I want to show you what you can actually do to see tangible results for your child. Vision therapy is not a magic quick fix. It takes time and effort, but you can do it yourself in your own home. That's the key, to do it yourself in your own home. It is the chance to bring about the change and the solution you've been looking for. And there is nothing else that can train the actual skills your child needs. Nothing at all. I don't believe. Now remember, I promised that you would not pay $2,727 today. In fact, today I have a very special offer just for you. Because I know what it's like to have a child with learning disabilities. I understand. I'm passionate about seeing kids succeed at school. And because I understand your frustration and that you want to help. And I also know that most of you want to do something, anything you can to help your child and save them from a miserable academic future. So as I said before, it's $2,727 worth of value, but you won't pay that with us. It's only $127 a month or 32 bucks a week for nine months for the full program. Now let's make this really cool with some extra special mega bonuses. I mean, this is a little more fun. These are valued at $168. I want to throw these to you for free because they're fun. Teaching good decision making. Don't you want that for your child? Help your child to make the right decisions, especially as they get older. It's valued at $37. It's yours for free if you join us. Asperger's answered reveal. <clears throat> reveal. If you have an Asperger's child, or if you think you do, you can learn the secrets of understanding them. It's valued at $47 and it can make a huge difference. It's yours for free. Ouch, here's one, the child diet dilemma. Listen, I believe very firmly that we need to help our kids in their diet. 
feeding them junk food is not the answer. And this great little publication, $37 value, it's yours for free. Learn how to change your child's diet and impact them forever. And finally, if you're a single parent, we want to throw this one in as well. It'll help you as you parent your child. Valued at $47. Uh, it's an awesome little publication. It's yours for free. So here's what you get. Let me recap. Seven modules for $2,079 worth of value. Uh, full email access, 500. You will also get those eight incredible bonuses. The total value is $2,875. And you're not going to pay that. It is $127 a month. And you get all of those bonuses. Isn't that incredible? It's right there for you. So let me finish by saying this. Uh, thank you for listening, but doing something is better than doing nothing. Remember, give your child a fish, feed them for a day, teach them to fish, feed them for a lifetime. Listen, I can't emphasize this enough. The longer you leave this, the harder it is for them to catch up and the more time and expense you will face. If you get this out of the way in grade two, if you get them up to speed and doing well in grade two, it's a lot nicer than waiting till grade five. Not only for their self-esteem, not only for their, uh, their abilities and their frustration, but also the time and expense you'll put in later on, in high school even, that you'll spend on tutoring to try and get them going. It's, it's huge. You can get this out of the way for 32 bucks a week. Why wouldn't you do it? So let me finish with this. We are trying to give your child the skills they need to succeed in learning for a lifetime. It's only $127 a month to change your child's life forever. They'll never have to redo these and top them up once they've got these skills. You can conquer dyslexia and learning disabilities and give your child the chance to become all that they can possibly be in learning and in life. All you need to do, folks, is click on the button below and let's get started. If you start right now, you can be up and going with this in five or 10 minutes. It's a simple PayPal thing and away you go. I urge you, come on, join us. Have a go. Have a flutter. You know, do it for a couple of months and see what happens. I urge you because I think you'll see amazing improvement in your child. It's out there. You can do it. You can do it yourself in your own home. And uh, I'll be here every step of the way to guide you and lead you through. So click on the button below. Come join us. It's not a huge ask. It's going to be an amazing journey. And I can't wait to hear about the results that you get with your child as they go through learning at light speed. So thank you for listening. God bless you. And we will uh, catch you next time. If you've got any questions, give me a call. But hey, if in doubt, click the button below and join us because I think it's going to be an awesome journey together. Take care. Bye-bye.